right. This week, this week, we are. We started last week. Five weeks of gratitude. Five weeks of gratitude. And this is week two. This is week two of our gratitude、um, Sunday. Week two. And today, as we approach this this second week, we're going to come to、uh, a verse. Go ahead and turn to Acts thirteen. We're going to come to a verse that not only validates how good God is. Anybody willing to admit that God is good to you? This is one thing when you can say like God is good, like that general, like God, you're good. But just take a moment and, and and think about how good he is to you. Now, 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 now. Here's what I have figured out, and what we'll dig into today. God, God's goodness to us takes on a completely different meaning when we know how bad we are. I'll do that again. See, when you just say God is good. That's one thing; it's general. But when you're willing to be truthful about your own state, and then recognize just how good God has been to you, His goodness takes on another entire meaning. Amen. I was I was talking to a well, I was actually watching another guy, pastor in Florida. You know the hurricanes have hit Florida, and I was watching a pastor who. His sanctuary received extensive, extensive damage.、Mm-hmm. Extensive damage. They can't have service this morning in the sanctuary. And he said something as he was letting the people know about the damage and all of that. He said something real profound. He said, "Listen, I still have a sanctuary to worship in." He said, "I'm not going to sit here and complain about the fact that my sanctuary got damaged." When some people don't have a house, I don't know if y'all paid attention. There's a town in Haiti. Eighty percent of the town is gone. Not eighty percent has sustained damage. Eighty percent of the town just doesn't exist anymore. Like the aerial photos, there's just nothing there. Like it's flat. And many of us, many of us look at our lives and have, as my father would say, the unmitigated gall to complain. I want y'all to think about that for a minute. Like, wait, wait. Let, let me refocus my complaints here. What am I complaining about again? Because I went to the store with some money and couldn't find what I was looking for. I'm about to get angry because I went to the store with money to buy something that other people only dream about, and I couldn't find what I was looking for. And I'm gonna get road rage and cuss out the person next to me. Really? In a car? That many people would beg to have when they walk in miles just to be able to eat food that I wasted. Yeah, I think we might need to revisit our priorities. And so today, as we look at this text that we're going to look at, we're going to really determine just how good God is to us. Now, I need to revisit the gratitude definition. And if this is your first time, y'all, y'all just put in your notes this definition: gratitude, the quality of being thankful, the quality of being thankful. That's part A. Here's the rest: and readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. And readiness to show appreciation for, <clears throat> and to return kindness. So gratitude is is not simply thank you. Gratitude is thank you, and this is what I'm willing to do because I'm grateful. Did y'all catch that? See, it's one thing to just say I'm grateful. It's another thing to say my gratitude is gonna make me do something. And what we want to get to is actually doing what gratitude deserves. Gratitude is more than your praise. See, we can have a good, good service, right? And 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 we can talk about, you know, just think about what God has done. Oh, thank you. But that's not that's not all gratitude is. Gratitude is after you said thank you. Now what? 
Now that you've come to church and you've clapped your hands and you like the song, now what you're going to do? Now that, now that everything is said and done and you feel like you have checked off your Sunday I went to church box, now what? Now what? What does gratitude look like tomorrow on the job that you hate? What does that look like? What does gratitude look like when you wake up on Tuesday and your car don't start? What does gratitude look like when on Wednesday you get a bill you can't afford? What does gratitude look like then? What does it cause me to do? What does gratitude look like when somebody texts you on Thursday and you have everything in you to tell them about themselves? I know that never happens to nobody. But what does gratitude look like? on Thursday? What does gratitude look like on Friday when you are quote unquote believing God for a spouse and everybody you know is out on a date? What you looking at me like that for? The simple question if we're really going to be honest is why should I be grateful? Like for what? Because some of us, I can go through the room and you know, some of us can say you don't know how bad it's been. Anybody ever been there? Y'all don't want to be honest tonight. You don't know how bad it's been. Anybody ever had a you don't know how bad it's been? Anybody ever heard somebody else's testimony and go, oh, that's nothing. Let me see. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you sitting up there. Come on now. I've talked to many of you. And some of us in this room have gone through some things that would take the average person out. Right? But none of us have the right nor privilege to say what's too much for somebody else. Come on now. What you don't think is a big deal to somebody else could be more than they can bear. So all of us have to make this thing personal. All of us has to look at our own lives and go, God, wait a minute. You've been good to me according to where I am. According to my testimony, according to my maturity, God, I'm grateful for what you've done for me. But again, why? Why should I after everything that I've been through? Why? Why should I actually do something? Why should I forgive? How long do I have to put up with this? How much longer do I have to handle somebody slapping me in the face? I've run out of cheeks to turn to them. How much longer do I have to handle it? How much longer do I have to endure. Lord, I'm tired of this. Y'all, I'm not really dealing with this thing. The whole nation is fatigued. I hear it everywhere. The entire nation, not just the church. The whole nation is fatigued. And the reason that we are fatigued is because we're trying to find solutions in us. Instead of trying to find solutions in the Lord. The Bible says, I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. All of my help comes from what? Not Congress. I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. All of my help comes from? Not your grandmother. I will look to the where? From whence cometh my help. All my help comes from where? Not your credit score. Are y'all understanding what happens is, oftentimes we're looking internal, and then we run out of our own ideas, and now we get fatigued because we did not look to the author and finisher of our faith. We did not look to the one who's able to keep us from falling. We did not look to the one who was the same yesterday, today, and forever. We look to us, and we're fallible. We're a mess. We have bad days, good days. 